Hi YouTube, Brian James, that microphone thirds guy with you once again. And I was fortunate a couple of days ago enough to, to get my hands on an OM system, it, OM1, the new OM1. I had one in my hand for real, it was actually in my hands. And it was everything you'd expect it to be from an Olympus camera, to tell you the truth. The build quality was superb, the feel that the hand was great. It felt uh, a little bit more chunky than the EM1 Mark II that I have and the EM1 Mark III that I've used. Um, the grip is certainly a little bit bigger. The camera is the basic layout of any Olympus um, pro-level camera. It's, it's got that solid, solid build and solidity in it, its use. I only had half an hour with it. Um, really, really enjoyable. It had um, the Mark I version of the 12-40 to lens. It didn't have the new 12-40 the new Mark II lens on it. But it was exquisite. And I thought to myself, I want one of these. Oh, do I want one of these? This is lovely. I ran a few test shots through it, and I sat there thinking to myself, this is great. This really is wonderful. And I, I mulled over it for a few moments, and then it started to hit me. I'd taken photographs of exactly the same things I would have taken photographs with my AM1 Mark II. I hadn't pushed the camera anywhere near, near its limits. And I sat down thinking as to, well, what limits would I be pushing the camera to to get the most out of it as to compared to what I already have? Now, there are a few things which I'm really impressed with. Um, although I didn't get the chance to test them properly, the, um, the sensor on it, being the stacked sensor, should in theory be able to give it an awful lot of uh, better response to fast-moving objects. Um, especially when you're using the electronic shutter. That's something I'm, I am a little bit interested in. But again, how many times do I actually use the electronic shutter on really fast-moving objects? I use electronic shutter a lot, but not usually for fast-moving objects. So that was that. Then I started to think to myself about all the other bits and pieces. Um, I love the, the charging. I love the, the fact that you've got... Um, the, you know the, the the charging options on it being able to be used with the um, through the camera as well, which you could do on the Mark III, which I can't do on my Mark II. But what else did I really think that it was different on it? Well, the feel was different. The battery life, I had half an hour's use of it. Is the battery life going to be more or less? I've got no idea. It's supposed to be better. But I don't really have problems on the batteries that I have at the moment. And I started thinking more and more, would I justify spending all this extra money on a camera which the extra features, the things which are making it very, very different, would I really benefit from them for the amount of money that I'm spending? And I've got to say no. The majority of the photography that I do doesn't push that anywhere near its limits whatsoever. Now, I know that there will be some of you out there screaming at the screen at the moment and say, ah, but what about so-and-so? And I take this sort of photograph. I take sports photographs, I take nature photographs. I take low-light scenes. I do all this, that, and the other. And it's going to be wonderful for me. That's great. I've no objection to that. I've no problem on that. But, as I said before, I've stopped my business. I'm a recreational shooter more than anything else. And even if I do do business, I'm using an awful lot of the time studio settings. I've just released a video about my pop-up studio kit. I'm using studio settings a lot of the time. And for that, I generally tend to find that um, I'm using lighting. I'm not using the camera to its extremes. I'm using lighting to create the effects that I want. Um, the recreational shots that I have, really I can get almost anything I want to by using a slightly faster prime lens than the zoom lenses. If I'm going into buildings which you've got low light, I can get around that. Now, I have seen the comparisons, there have been some fantastic comparisons by some of the, the well-known YouTubers on here about the in increase in performance as far as low, level, like, uh, low light level in uh, ISO. But even then, I don't push my cameras anywhere near the breaking point on them. And it has really set me thinking, do I want to spend that much money on a new camera or can I get everything I want to out of this one? And that was a bigger question which then settled in my mind after I'd given the camera back. I went back home, I've got some fantastic cameras, I've got an AM1 Mark II and I've got my G9, both up to the newer specs on the firmware. The G9 is fabulous on that. Um, and in reality, I can't really think what else I'm getting to make a justifiable difference on those. So for me, for the moment, the OM1 is out. It is a beautiful camera, don't get me wrong. And if it's what you want, don't hesitate, just go and get one. I think you'll, I think you'll absolutely adore it. The 
interest for me maybe comes when I see the Mark II versions of the lenses for real. I haven't had a chance to play with those. Um, but in reality, does this mean that I'm at the end of my buying, my camera buying life? Well, I don't think it is. I don't think that I am at that yet. But what I'm finding is the cameras that I'm looking at and the reasons I'm looking at are very different to what I did a few years ago. Now, one of the reasons I would have bought an OM-1 a few years ago is the fact that shooting professionally, I need to have a, a bang up to date camera which has got low, sh which I start off with low shutter actuations because I've put a lot of shutter actuations on a camera and it would get well hammered. My, my uh, OM-1, my original OM-1 is absolutely hammered. Half the, um, the, the grips have gone on it because the, the material on there has been, uh, has came off, it's peeled off over the years. The eyepiece has been replaced, goodness knows how many times. A little piece of plastic on the eyepiece is gone, so it's actually glued into place. But it's a bit of a it's a bit of a trigger's broom um, insofar as it's had you know everything new on it, but still the same old camera I've always had. It's been ultra reliable. But if I'm going to be shooting professionally, I want reliable kit all the time. So OM1, nice. Will it be a camera I'll buy in the future? Yes. Because, again, I've worked out, you know, the age that I am at the moment, um, I think camera development is going to change in the next few years, and I think what we see as a camera is going to change. And I think I started my, um, my proper photography life, um, taking photographs properly as opposed to just a youngster playing with a camera. I started it on an Olympus OM-1N, one of the original film cameras, the one I still have. And you'll see links in my channel to that one. And don't forget, if you do follow the channel, um, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you can, if you're enjoying this video, give me a big thumbs up because it helps YouTube to spread the algorithms and get more people watching it. Um, but it would be rather nice to start my photography career on an OM-1 and to finish it on an OM-1. And I can see that being the possibility of it. I tend to keep cameras quite a long time and I use them and I've used them sometimes and the lifespan of this camera I'm looking at probably about 10, 10 to 15 years that's going to make me 70 to 75 years old and I think that um, it's probably going to be uh, a useful camera still at that time so it may be my very last camera that I buy the on one it'd be rather nice to top and tail it like that but what do you think let me know in the comments below is this too much is it are we do we actually need all the things that we're using is it something you do need for your style of shooting is it a fact that we're just being led by the hype from the photography companies to buy new cameras or will the cameras that we've used for a long time still be in use in another 10 years time and doing perfectly good results let me know below really interested to see your comments and if you get the chance while you're looking below there's a paypal link if you want to leave me enough for a cup of coffee cups of coffee have got very interestingly expensive as well i'm not pleading for more money on that but it's interesting uh, with all this which is going on in the world at the moment, the coffee price is slowly going up. I spend my time, my most of my days, I, I have very few vices, but drinking a, a sociable cup of coffee is one of my vices. And I've noticed that the prices are slowly increasing. So um, keep your eyes on this. Now. It's not just fuel prices going up, coffee is as well. That's going to be the crippler. So I'm going to be paying more for my coffee and I'm going to pay more for the fuel to get down here to get it. What a mixed up world we live in. Until the next time, this is Brian James, that Micro Four Thirds guy saying, whatever camera you shoot, whether it's an old one or whether it's a newest OM1 or, um, GH, or GH6, whatever it is, take it out, enjoy your photography, keep taking photographs and have fun. See you next time. Bye bye.